the word or tempt you away from, from what you know God wants you to do. So it's the sin to you. But I like what John MacArthur says. He says in light of the faith chapter that we've just gone through, we're talking about the, the, the Old Testament saints of faith. Um, he said in the context of that, he said it could very likely be unbelief is the sin. So, you know, let's lay aside the sin that easily ensnares us. And I thought, you know, he, he's got a point. He's got a point. Unbelief is something that's creeped in. Oh, it just creeps in. It's okay. It's okay. It just creeps in, you know, and, and all of a sudden, you know, you, you just don't trust God for that anymore. Or you read the word and he says that he'll meet the need, he doesn't leave you or forsake you. And all of a sudden you, you have a bit of an issue and, and, and you think, well, where's God? Where's God in this? Unbelief crept in because by saying, where's God in this, is unbelief. And so he's got a point there. And I, and I, and I would encourage you to consider that as, 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 as good doctrine. That, yeah, uh, unbelief creeps in in so many different ways. But God won't meet our need. Oh, you know, I've lost my job. Well, God will can't. Well, I'm never going to make it, you know. But God does meet the need, whether we lose our job or not. God always takes care and oversees us. But the moment we say, oh, I've lost a job. Oh, no, we're in trouble now. Now, that's unbelief. No, trust in the Lord. Lean not to your own understanding. All your ways acknowledge Him. And He'll break your path. Just let Him take care of it. He's there all the time. Nothing catches Him by surprise. <laughs> so good to know that. And so the writer is saying, you know what, in light of these guys in chapter 11, you and I have got to become radical in our Christian war, in our run. We have to become radical and, and fight against the battles, the, uh, and the sins and the weights that easily entangle us uh, and slow us down. To do that, you have to be honest with yourself. And you have to be honest with God. You haven't been caught out, you know, um, thinking that you're fooling God and saying, God wouldn't know this, you know. And, and, but God knows everything. God knows everything. And we have to be honest with him, though, from our own hearts. And, and just become radical in our walk. There are things in your life this morning that, that you must be thinking, yeah, well, if I wasn't involved in that or if I didn't do that or... You know, and it's, it's well, where's it going to get me anyway? After a year, I'll be sick of that and I'll be looking for something else. Well, that's a weight. That's a weight. That, that takes away time that you could be running with endurance, the race set before you. And of course, then there's those little sins and uh, yeah, unbelief or whatever it is that, that you're allowing to rule. Um, just get rid of it. We have to become radical. It's tough, isn't it? It's tough, you know. Some of the things in our life that we, uh, well, we kind of like them, you know. It's good fun to do this and, and that. And um, I'd love to go out and play golf twice a week. I would. Really. Somebody came into the house the other day, and, and 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 I forget who it was, but they looked at my golf clubs, and I think they said something like uh, they've gone into hibernation or they retired or something. Was that you, John? There's he John, there's yeah, he. He can. And straight away I'm thinking, yeah, well, and straight away, if I remember rightly, I started making a reason of how, yes, I are and I are going to go and play golf soon because the weather's going to change and everything's going to be fine. And, you know, the reason I don't play as often as I'd love to is because it impedes me from spending time in study and preparation. So you've got to make the sacrifices. <laughs> but you do it. No, it's not hard. It's, it's good to serve the Lord. This illustration. It talks about, I read it this week, about an old mechanic who got saved. And uh, I think you will understand, you know, mechanics, non-Christian mechanics, their mouths can be something, uh, well, a little bit foul, you know. Uh, and this, this old mechanic had a foul mouth before he met Jesus. And after he saved, he battled with this. And the language would come out. He hit his thumb or he whatever and skinned the knuckle and, you know. And he was having a real problem bringing that under control. And uh, he talked to his preacher about the problem. He said, oh, I'll preach, you know, uh, I, I'm just having a major problem, you know. Uh, I, I, I accept the Jesus, but 
Man, the old mouth just keeps coming. So the preacher formulated a plan for him. He said, every time that you feel like you need to use profanity, why don't you just sing a hymn? And so, you know, a few days later, the, the, the preacher called in to see the mechanic and, and uh, just stopped by and said, well, how's it going? He said, wow, pretty good. He said, oh man, it's tough. He says, take the day. He said, I've, I've sung every hymn I know and I've even made up a couple. Because <laughs> it was just a battle. And sometimes it is a battle. But you've got to be radical. And whatever it is in your life, it may, you know, whatever it is, it, it, you've just got to stand strong and say, this is it, and, and draw a line in the sand, if you will, and say, no more, no more. And just get the victory. There is a problem that we have with those sins that just grab a hold of us and entangle us. But you know what? God helps us conquer. And if you're sincere, you put your trust in Him and you overcome. And you overcome. So He says, therefore, I oh know you're thinking, come on, you know. Therefore, also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Let's run the race that is set before us. And it could easily just be saying to each one of us this morning, I've set a course for each one of you. You need to run the race that I've set before you. Again, that's a challenge, you know. I'm, hey, I'm picking them out there this morning. It's a challenge. Each one of you has got a course that God has set for you. Your race. It's an endurance race. I'll tell you that. <coughs> But, but what is the course? Have you actually waited on God and said, where's the markers? I want to run this race. But it's the race that is set before us, that is set before you. Listen to what the psalmist said, Psalm 119, verse 32. I eagerly race along the way of your commands, for you enable me to do so. So what is the race course that he set for you? Or have you even bothered to check it out? It's a bit of a challenge, gang. Mm. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And it's interesting in the Greek, that's, that's that word again that means to look away from something to something else. And he's saying, look away from the difficulty, look away from the persecution, look away from those things that impede you and look to Jesus. That's what he's saying here. So it's not just looking to Jesus. It's an effort to look to Jesus away from that stuff that keeps entangling me. Or the persecution that keeps coming at me. So he says, looking away to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, 